Hey, good afternoon. I'm going to answer a couple of questions from my viewers on my channel and give a little bit more explanation about what's going on this winter around the homestead, uh, mainly around the livestock and the uh, greenhouse. Yeah, we'll be right back. Hey, welcome back to Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. Fall has definitely set in. We've got leaves falling to the ground. The acorns are falling to the ground. And if you're gonna collect acorns, right now is a good time to collect them uh, for making flour, supplements, whatever. And this is a nice native edible to uh, collect and harvest right now at this time of year. I want to take you up to the livestock yard. I want to share some uh, announcements with you guys. So a couple of months ago, well, July, it was back, I think July, June or July. Anyway, the goats broke through their pen and got into the billy goats. And now they're pregnant. They're going to be freshening or having kids December 12th is when they're expected. When I calculated the day, the first day that I caught them in with the boys, I fixed the fence after finding out where they had uh, broken into. And yeah, both girls are pregnant. They usually come into season right about now, October, November. And this is when I breed them. And this is optimal time to breed the goats. Uh, right now because then they won't freshen until the spring warmer weather so this is going to be really challenging for me when the goats freshening this late in the year and this early into winter i do have the barn ready as best as i can make it ready for when the goats do have the babies i am going to keep a close eye on them and as an extra measure i will be installing a wi-fi camera that i can monitor them uh, this camera has the ability of seeing what's going on at night and of course during the day so i can keep an eye on what's going on and run up here and intervene if i have to and get those newborn babies uh, in a nice safe warm environment i have this animal carrier that i will get set up and ready inside the greenhouse so uh, if I need it, uh, then I can just move the babies into the greenhouse and then bring them out to their mothers to get them fed a couple times a day. And so that's what my goal is. I keep the greenhouse heated. I'm gonna talk about that in a minute, but there's something else I got another announcement to make. Earlier this year, I decided to just put the incubators away and let the livestock try to incubate their own eggs to great failure. Nobody incubated anything except for a hen. I incubated some chicks. So I'll be collecting turkey eggs for the incubators as soon as they start laying. I'll do the same with the, the geese. I'm what's happening is i'm having problems with predators getting into the eggs yeah and that's how come i called all-out war on rodents because they were getting into everything they were destroying everything and so the battle is being won but it's not going to ever cease it's going to be an ongoing thing because we live in the wilderness we constantly have other predators moving in rats mice squirrels so if they come in and start getting into areas i don't want them yeah so just in the past week i found that my ducks have been laying eggs in the tall grass here. I, this is not unusual for my ducks to lay eggs in the winter. This is when they start laying their eggs, November, December, January. 
and I tried to allow my ducks to incubate their own eggs. They were on the nest for the longest time, but not one egg hatched. So yeah, that was to my disappointment. So I'm taking matters into my hound hands and I went ahead and set up an, an incubator. I've got three of them, but I set one up for now and I'm incubating some duck eggs and chicken eggs. When we get into the greenhouse, I'll show you. <laughs> now, if you guys have been following me, especially on my Facebook page, uh, you'll recognize this scene, except it had a lot of snow in it. Yes, we got blanketed with snow about a week and a half ago, came out, did some picture taking and uploaded it. And uh, I got to paint that picture. I do painting in watercolor primarily. That's the medium I prefer. Well, the one I feel more comfortable with and more successful with. But anyway, I got some uh, pictures that I took a year ago last Christmas and I'm getting ready for Turkey Day, Santa Claus and family coming up here in the couple in, in the next several weeks. But anyway, this picture really sparked some since pe um, uh, people know that I paint. It was my cousin Karen in Canada, my cousin Judy or Julie, Judy down in um, California. Yeah, they should go where she lives. And then my sister-in-law, Daisy May, they all asked me to paint this. So I guess I gotta sit down and try to recreate this scene in watercolor. I'll uh, see how well I do. I'll probably sit down tonight. No, it'll have to be tomorrow. I'll probably sit down tomorrow and do it. Let's go into the greenhouse. Got some stuff to talk to you guys about in there. By the way, um, <laughs> I did a garden video uh, previous to this and just sharing with you guys my experiment and experiencing the uh, ability to grow vegetables throughout the year in any month so we have a, a constant crop coming in. It's called, uh, there's a term for it, uh, successive garden, repetitive gardening and um, uh, changing your garden up from time to time from place to place but this year is my first year ever of growing stuff out here in the garden year-round so I'm maintaining it uh, throughout the whole year I'm exploring different things I can grow that are okay in cold weather when to plant them and uh, how to treat them for winter months so let me give you a little bit of background about the greenhouse before we go in. A lot of you are my uh, dedicated followers. Some of you are my uh, new followers. And those of you who are new don't know that the greenhouse was the windows and doors I accumulated from um, contractor friends of mine. I just put the word out and said, hey, if you guys come up with any free windows and doors, I'll take them. I want to build the greenhouse. So they they obliged, so it was free to them to get rid of them and gift them to me. So I stockpiled the windows and doors, and then we were, because I have the YouTube channel, we got discovered by a casting office out of Hollywood, California. They contacted us and wanted us to audition for a reality TV show on Homestead Rescue. Now, we don't get TV up here, so I've never heard of the show. Can't watch Discovery Channel uh, or really, really any network TV. We just don't have that ability. So I had to research to find out who these people were, what the show was, and decided to go ahead. Asked the family we auditioned. They showed up. We had two and a half weeks of filming, and the Rainey family, uh, Misty Rainey, and my daughter built this greenhouse using the windows that I had stockpiled. Now I gotta say this, greenhouse is serving a multitude of functions. I gotta open the door a little bit. I just turned the heat down and the temperature in here is 100 degrees. Yeah, it's 100 degrees in the greenhouse because the sun is passing by and the windows are trapping the heat in, so that's what's heating it up. So I don't need the furnace. I have this heater, it's propane operated. I run it about Oh, well, this is answering my question of a viewer that just got uh, um, asked me this question about two hours ago. So I'm gonna go ahead and read his question. He says, wondering if the cost of your greenhouse heater will be what you would pay at the grocery store for the same plants. 
To save on electricity, I put a 50 gallon tub of water with a hot water heating element in my greenhouse and have since learned that this will be costing me about $45 per month of usage. Not sure yet if the value over the cost will be worth it. Well, thank you for the question. And my answer to the question is when Misty uh, built the greenhouse, she installed these uh, six uh, water tanks and painted them black and uh, they are to trap the heat in the water from the uh, daytime and then release the heat keeping uh, during the nighttime and uh, keeping the um, greenhouse above freezing. Now since I don't have to use the heater during the daytime uh, it cuts the propane usage way down and it approximately three dollars per gallon on a five gallon bottle one bottle of propane will last me probably if I'm really conservative on it it'll last me about six days so pencil that out but I gotta add that the greenhouse is more than just a greenhouse in growing plants I'm using it also as a um, well, a man cave. So having the heat out here is a bonus. And during the daytime when it's really cold and icy outside, the sun will provide heat. Uh, in the evening, the heater will provide heat. This gives me the uh, a space where I can come out and uh, study my scripts for whatever movie I'm filming next. And you just give me some um, me space. Get me out of the house because I hate being stoved up in the house all day. It's just not my nature, not my character. I love being outdoors. And this gives me some semblance of being outdoors, but being kept nice and warm from the... Um, yeah, from the uh, elements outside. And so this is my man cave. And I have some good company here with Sam Squatch. He stands vigilant, protecting the uh, stuff here in the greenhouse. Anyway, those stupid gooses that I was talking to you about earlier, the turkeys, the ducks, I moved a greenhouse or uh, an incubator in here. This is the perfect environment for uh, the incubator because the, uh, the, uh, the temperature stays pretty constant. And I have duck eggs and chicken eggs in here right now. And I have an electric electronic transmitter which transmits the data of the not only the temperature but also the moisture into a little uh, device I have sitting on my desk so I can keep constant watch on this. And if it dips down below, like if the power goes out, it alarms. It tells me the power, uh, the uh, temperature is dropping below incubation st uh, stage so I could run out here and hook the power up to a power booster that I have on standby if I have to and uh, also I have one sitting up here on the shelf that monitors the actual temperature of the greenhouse environment itself. This is a worm bin. I have worms in here where I'm generating worm castings and uh, which is good fertilizer for the garden. And fertilizer is an issue right now. I have uh, I've been growing the worms out. This makes a nice work surface for me. And with the heat, it keeps the worms from freezing to death while I have them out here. So it's a win-win. I have lots of stuff going on here. So the question is, uh, uh, you know, the, the cost in offsetting, um, the, it, is it cheaper to go to the store and just buy the plants and uh, eat them or is it cheaper for me to do this well that's a complex answer it's too hot in here let me step out and explain it to you the complexity of the answer is we live in the wilderness and it takes a lot of fuel to even get to town to make our purchases and with the price of fuels going up you see where I'm going with this yep and then also with the supply that is available out there to purchase, it's costing a lot more money as the prices go up because the fuels, as the fuel uh, prices go up, they have to pass it on to the consumer, which they raise the price of the produce that you're purchasing. So you have to weigh those things, things out. Am I gonna go ahead and spend like uh, 30 bucks a month in gas to keep this warm? and continue uh, nurturing my garden throughout the winter months and grow things that grow readily in cold climates. We're in zone eight. We're tucked up in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. We're down here in Southwestern Oregon. So we're limited to what we can grow, when we can grow it, how we can grow it. So I'm adapting. 
And I guess bottom line, if you, if you don't adapt, if you're not flexible, you're gonna break. So I'm experimenting, I'm exploring, uh, and bottom line is this really isn't costing me any money at all. I mean, when you really stop and think about this, all this was free. Of course, that's relevant only to me and not to everybody else because of uh, the circumstances that are taking place, which allows me uh, a free, basically a free passive income. I retired in May. I no longer make an income from work, but I do have my social security. I do have other things going on. And then I have a YouTube vlog and that YouTube vlog, I, I like right now I'm making this video. This video will probably be, uh, be about 30 minutes in length after I get it all edited down. I'll spend about an hour uh, recording it. Then I'll spend about an hour and a half, two hours producing it. And then I'll upload that and make it go live. And so I have about maybe three hours invested in this whole project. Then once I uploaded it, I get the views. Of course, you have to tolerate the, uh, my apologies, you have to to tolerate the uh, ads. Uh, but that's where my passive income is coming from. Some videos, I, I like this video, I, I think it'll just generate me overall in a year, probably $30 maybe. Uh, and I'll have other videos that don't do as well. I get maybe $10 a year, but then I have a few videos, which are my big ones. They make me upwards of, yeah, <laughs> uh, a lot. Let's just put it that way, a lot. So um, for me, this is all free. Plus the greenhouse is built for me for free uh, by, um, Misty Rainey and my daughter uh, when we were filming that reality show. So I hope I answered your question and uh, or your questions and also gave you a little bit more insight what's going on, what I'm doing, what I will be doing. I've got to find things to keep myself busy because being in retire being retired and not having to wake up to alarm clock, it's easy just to fall into that um, mode of uh, wasting away in the recliner and that's not a lifestyle I want. I'm losing weight, more weight, I'm staying active. Uh, I got another gig uh, in the works for uh, modeling. I modeled for Levi Strauss last year, this year, uh, or next year. I don't know when we're going to do it. I'll be modeling for a book, I guess, uh, a character in a book. I don't know where that's going to be at. And then plus I'm painting and some of my Western art is going to be illustrated, used as illustrations in uh, books. So I'm staying busy, you know, really busy. So it keeps me out of that lounge chair. Uh-huh. Plus making videos. This is my passion. This is my hobby. Got a lot of hobbies. And then I got my man cave, which makes me happy. It gives me some sunshine. It keeps me happy all year round. I'm your host, Jerry Hansen. This is Pine Meadows Hobby Farm. We're a frugal homestead tucked high in the Cascade Ranges of the Pacific Northwest. Please stay tuned to more videos. You could do that by subscribing and clicking that bell icon. That'll let you to new videos as I upload them. Give us a thumbs up. Click that share button. Sharing my videos on your social media platforms helps us out a lot. I'm posting on Twitter. I'm posting on Facebook under uh, Jerry Hansen on Facebook. I'm posting on uh, Reddit, uh, Pinterest, uh, Tumblr. Um, I'm exploring other platforms to post on and there was just mention of creators posting on Twitter to get paid 10 times, 10% 10 more than what we earn on YouTube. So we'll see how that works out, when it works out. So I may switch, not, not pull off of YouTube, but do Twitter also. Um, why not? I mean, it's a no bueno. We'll see you guys later. Be happy, be safe, be kind.
Okay. Let's get this synced and see if we can <laughs> produce this show without any technical difficulties. Uh, yeah.